prompt cavalcade of America starring Geraldine Fitzgerald. Good evening. This is Geraldine Fitzgerald. Tonight's cavalcade is a story of a shocking young lady named Ellen Swallow who dared become a scientist during the 1870s when no nice girl dreamed of venturing outside the sewing circle. But before our story begins, here is Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Thank you, Miss Fitzgerald. Each year about this time, many of us begin thinking about painting our houses. For the shutters and trim, it will be to your advantage to specify DuPont Dulux trim and trellis finishes. They hold their color and gloss, they are quick drying, and are resistant to fading. Dulux trim and trellis finishes come in light, dark, and jade green, Quaker brown, and black. Modern trim colors that are another of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Now, paging Miss Ellen, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald as Ellen Swallow in an original radio play on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Sir, you there. What are you about? Why, why it's Professor Richards. Good morning, Dr. Andrews. Why are you whispering? Why are you standing there peering into the laboratory window? Stop shushing me. What's going on here, anyway? I've heard this to be a very interesting experiment conducted in the chemistry class this morning. It may even be dangerous. Quite so, quite so. May I ask just what you've heard? Uh, may I ask just what you've heard? That the experiment is to be most unusual, in fact, utterly fantastic. Uh, observed anything? Not yet, sir. Oh, good. Then it hasn't begun. <clears throat> Move over. In 1871, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology was a young school, but its men were already gaining a reputation for their scientific pioneering, their fearless experiments. Well, not the least fearless of these took place one winter morning in the chemistry laboratory. It was the day a woman walked into the class for the first time. And you will observe that, as Berthelot maintains, chemistry possesses this active faculty to a more eminent degree than... Well, miss, what is it? Professor Ordway? Yes, yes, what do you want? There's a class going on. I'm Ellen Swallow. I'd like to enroll in this course, sir. <laughs> Quiet, gentlemen, please. Ellen Swallow, eh? Yes, sir. President Runkle did mention some nonsense about a woman wishing to study at MIT but I hardly dared hope she would honor the chemistry department. I hope to major in chemistry, sir, with your permission. This is an advance class, young lady, and the term has already begun. We have no time for tea parties. I didn't earn my degree at Vassar by attending tea parties, Professor. I'm prepared for advanced work. I dare say that point remains to be proved. Oh, please let me prove it, sir. Hmm. I'll have to discuss the matter with Dr. Runkle. Meanwhile, I'll take a table over near the wall for today. I'm sure Mr. Sims there will be delighted to make room for you. Won't you, Sims? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you ever so much, Professor. However, Miss Wallow, you'll receive no special privileges because of your sex. I expect none. All right, let's return to the discussion. See, I was there. Is this the table he meant? Well, yes, Miss. Well, Here, what? let me move these things over. Oh, yes. <coughs> oh, oh, dear. And now what? Uh, I, I, I uh, only dropped some test tubes, sir. It was all my fault. Well, pick them up. What's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a female student before? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> Here. Here, I'll help you. Oh, no, Mr. Sims, don't pick up glass with your bare hands. You'll cut yourself. Looks like I already have. Oh, my goodness. Well, the class is waiting. Have you two quite finished with your little chat? He's cut his hand rather badly, sir. Perhaps, perhaps I'd better get something to bandage it with. May I offer my kerchief, miss? Careful of your dress. Uh, here's some water. Uh, are you all right, miss? Gentlemen. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If this is a chemistry class, I'm a... a, a punch and burner. Yes, yes sir. sir. Gentlemen, I have called this special faculty meeting to discuss a rather extraordinary question. 
A young lady with a degree from Vassa has applied for admission to MIT as an advanced student in chemistry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, Dr. Andrews. I'm against it, Dr. Runkel. Unequivocally. Yes, I'm not surprised. But since her scholastic record is so high, I, I thought I'd let her enter a class or two without advance notice. Uh, Professor Ordway, uh, I believe she attended yours this morning. She certainly did. No bombshell couldn't have destroyed the discipline of that class any more effectively. Oh, you were there, Dr. Andrews? In a way, yes. And I say, let one female get her foot in the door, and before we know it, we'll be teaching classes in needlework and fudge making. <laughs> Not a bad idea. No, dear hmm? me. You know, I, I'm afraid you're letting your dyspepsia influence your judgment, Doctor. Professor Richards will back me up, and he's a young man with a healthy point of view. What do you say about it, Richard? Well, no I one think... has asked me what I think about it, and I'm the one who suffers. Well, what do you think, Ordway? Well, the girl has spunk, no mm. doubt about it. I, think... I tell you, if one gets her foot in the door... Why not allow her presence in classes, but not accept tuition? If there's any trouble from the outside of the Board of Regents, well, she simply is not a student here. I think no, that... I'm against it, uh, unequivocally. What is it uh, you were going to say, Richard? I think... Mm -hmm. Well, well, out with it. I just think she's beautiful. Tantalum oxide, 14.36. Cerium. Let's see now. That's odd. Miss Swallow, you still here? It's oh, nine o'clock. Oh. Oh, Professor Richard, I didn't hear you come in. Well, now, what are you doing? Not analyzing that Samarskite again. I'm afraid so. It's very mysterious, Professor. I've tried and tried, and it, it just doesn't add up. Well, students have been known to uh, stretch a little on their addition when their analyses didn't jive. <laughs> but the fact that mine doesn't add up to 100 might mean the presence of some new element. Something we don't even know about. Oh, Professor, wouldn't that be simply, simply splendiferous? Mm-hmm. It's the student's favorite dream to be hailed as the discoverer of a new element in the Earth's old crust. At one time or another, they're all sure they've done it. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. No, you didn't. I don't want to be hailed as anything. I only thought that if there was a chance... You know, that... you're certainly not the, uh, <laughs> the dangerous person they were afraid you'd be when you first came. <laughs> Is that what you thought me? Well, I, uh... <laughs> no, no. No, but I have wondered all along what you plan to do with your scientific education. I know. The hand that rocks the cradle is too fragile to handle a test tube. Well, mine isn't. But how can you make other people believe that? By sharing what I learn here with other women. I'm going to prove there's a distinct science to homemaking that can be applied by every woman in her own kitchen. Not a bad try, Richard. Not bad at all. Now, watch the master. <laughs> you talk a wonderful game of billiards, Ordway. Do I? Watch this. Oh, well, the master's touch. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, look who's coming, old peptic ulcers himself. Oh. Well, gentlemen, have to come to the club for sanctuary from the feminine influence. I don't understand, Dr. Andrews. I hear your Miss Swallow's planning to hang lace curtains in Ordway's laboratory. I don't find that particularly funny. Well, you're not in style, then. Everybody else is laughing. And they're laughing at both of you. That's so? Your shot, Bob. Right. Of course, I can see how young Bob here would be taken in by a pretty face. But you, Ordway... You know, there's talk around Boston that we might lose our charter on account of her. Maybe you'd both change your minds again if that happened. I've heard about enough, Andrew. Now, wait a minute. I've got something to say, too. I don't doubt it. You, too, have probably divined why she's really going to a man's school. There's such a wide choice of uh, <clears throat> prospective husband. Now, listen, Dr. Andrews. Ordway and I have both instructed Ellen Swallow in class. We've watched her work and have proof of her seriousness as a student. Proof? She made an analysis of Samarskite, found something missing, something she couldn't identify, kept on trying, and finally reported her suspicion that it contained a new element. 
Because of that report, a scientist in Kentucky has isolated two elements we never knew existed. And I have yet to hear her complain because she won't share in the glory. On the contrary, she's very happy about the whole thing. Come on, Ordway. You're shot. Oh, Professor Richard, come in. Good morning, Miss Fowler. Good morning. You don't mind having an observer in the lab today, do you? Oh, I'd be delighted. Mr. Herbert. How do you do? How do? Mr. Herbert is chairman of the advisory board in Boston. Oh, well, this is an honor. What would you like to see first, sir? What a woman could possibly find to do in a chemistry laboratory. Oh, I, I find plenty to do. I'm helping Professor Nichols at the moment, making water analysis for the Board of Health. And uh, when she's done her own work, she manages to get around to a few dozen other details, like cleaning up the lab after all of us sloppy males. <laughs> Wouldn't it be more practical to employ a charwoman for that duty and um, rather more orthodox morally? I beg your pardon? Uh, Mr. Herbert, perhaps we'd better show you how the chlorine content of water is determined now. What here. I'd like to know, Miss Swallow, is what good's all this going to do you in the kitchen? Well, why shouldn't chemistry be applied in the home, Mr. Herbert? Why shouldn't we know about pure water and pure foods? <laughs> do you think anyone's going to accept those analyses of yours? Why not? I don't want to be a scientist to, to shut myself away from the world. I want everyday life to be cleaner and safer and, and, and more enjoyable. Some man will have to go over your tests when you've finished, you know. I disagree. Thank goodness the men I work with here aren't, aren't prejudiced bigots living in the dark ages. I'm getting tired of being insulted and treated like some kind of a, of a lower vertebrate. <laughs> Frankly, I feel very sorry for your wife, Mr. Herbert. Good morning. Well, I never. Miss Swallow. Ellen. Excuse me, sir. I think I'd better go after her. It only goes to prove my contention all the more. Motion is no place... Where are you going? You heard me. I'm going to report this to Dr. Uncle. <laughs> Miss Swallow. Ellen, I, I, I'm terribly sorry. I don't know why I had to go and be so darn childish. Oh, no. <laughs> he could even make trouble. Now, everything you said was true, and it's about time you said it. Now, don't you worry. I'll take care of him. But, but to break down cry like that in front of him and in front of you. Oh. Well, now think of it this way. Suppose, suppose you're making an analysis of tears. You, uh, uh, we find a certain saline content, several known factors, but we also discover there is an element missing. And, uh, and so it, it doesn't add up to a hundred. That's right. Just as it was with your Samarskite analysis. In a tear, there's always a mysterious missing element. One that man has never been able to quite classify. It isn't written down in the books, Ellen. How? How can a person recognize it, then? By the way it acts. As a kind of catalytic agent. And by the way it hurts right under your heart? Yes, Ellen. That's just what it does. It hurts like the very devil. And when you discover that missing element in tears, what happens then? I know I'm in love. That I want to marry you. And be with you every moment, all the rest of my life. Oh, Robert. I know it too. Ellen. And, uh, oh, my darling, I don't care whether it adds up or not. You're listening to Paging Miss Ellen, starring Geraldine Fitzgerald as Ellen Swallow Richards on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. The early 1870s, a woman has been attending classes at Massachusetts Institute of Technology for the first time. Ellen Swallow's presence has caused its quota of shock comment, but her determination to become a chemist has proved her right to remain. But there was one thing she did not determine to do, however, and that was fall in love with a young professor of mining engineering and become Ellen Swallow Richards. Dr. 
doesn't it sound heavenly, Rob? Professor and Mrs. Robert Hallowell Richard. At home, 32 Elliott Street. Oh. oh, there's never been such a beautiful wedding. Oh, and never, ever such a beautiful bride. Oh, Rob, I... Yes, darling? I... You don't mind if I... If I sort of pat us on the back, do you, Rob? What do you mean? Well, for furnishing the house ahead of time and having everything ship shape <laughs> <laughs> To the last detail. Nobody can say we're impractical. Oh, no. And it's going to be such wonderful fun, proving that a home can be run scientifically and sensibly. Uh-huh. I'm so glad you agree with me, darling. We'll show all the doubters, won't we? Hey, mister, what was that address again? Of uh, 32 Elliott Street. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, 32. I suppose we're being awfully smug, but I... Say, uh, you two just got married, didn't you? Uh, yes. Uh... Yes, we did. <laughs> that man is an abyss of forgetfulness. He <laughs> waited for us at the church. Yes, I know. <laughs> We're going to be practical and modern, aren't we? Nobody's going to but say that... That's the first time she makes biscuits, mister. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is going to bring science into the kitchen. And my husband's going to apply engineering principles to all the household chores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, folks, here we are. 23 Elliott Street. I said 32. Oh, 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 so you did. Get it. It's amazing. <laughs> Never forget the day I got married. I kept forgetting everything, too. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There. Yep, here we are. Well, many happy returns. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Science in the kitchen. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's such a rattlebrain. He'd forget his head if it weren't tied on. <sighs> well, darling. Here we are. Mm hmm. Home. Now, I... Oh, that's odd. What? I, I know I... What's wrong? Ellen. Yes. Oh, Ellen, my sweet. What is it? <laughs> I forgot the key. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, do you want to look at the shopping list before I go? Oh, yes, Mrs. Now, let's see. Eggs, yeast, apples. I could make a fine stew of what's left of the lamb. Good. Better get some more onions, then. Onions? Well, you know, Mrs., the other ladies in the block, they think it isn't genteel of you to be eating onions. Now, oh, Katie, you haven't been talking over the back fence again. Oh, not exactly, but, well, I can't help hearing things. The other ladies think it's strange of you to be going off to that college every day, working over the devil's own blue in that chemistry laboratory. No wonder she's partial to onions, they say. <laughs> well, I say, what's an old-fashioned lamb stew without onions? Well, I'm afraid I'm after agreeing with you. Well, me. then, what do we care what the other ladies say? Oh, but it isn't only the onions, Mrs. They're saying what, about... Katie? You sure you want me to repeat it for you, word for word? Well, you seem determined to. Now, out with it. Well... They keep saying that what with you making tests at the Technology Institute and running that community kitchen in Boston and keeping a home, well, that there must be something queer about you, something sort of unnatural. <laughs> and what do you think, Katie? I'm standing up for you every time I mention your name. It, but I can't help worrying. Now, Katie, look, you're going to be married soon. O'Connor's pretty proud of the way you've learned to keep a house and to set a good table, isn't he? Oh, that he is, Mrs. He was saying yesterday, Katie... Since you came in, Mrs. Richard, you're certainly learning how to keep a fine, well ordered home. Every time I stop by for a sample of your home-baked bread, he says... Katie, do you know why I'm making food tests at MIT? No, I don't know. To find out which foods are pure and which are impure. Oh. And I transfer my findings to the New England kitchen in Boston so that, so that people can have a place to buy good food <laughs> with onions and lots of vegetables. Uh -huh. Food that are cheap to buy and good to eat. Oh, I see. And here at home, well, I... I don't think Professor Richard is unhappy with the way we're doing things, do you? Oh, no, Mrs. He's about as happy a man as I ever did see. <laughs> well, then tell the ladies next time you see them to stop worrying their pretty heads about us. We're doing fine. Ellen... Are you very busy? I have something to oh, show Rob, you. Oh, Rob, just a minute till I finish the running this sample. Oh, how's it going? Oh, sometimes I get so disgusted. Now, now look at that. It's simply loaded with impurities. Uh oh Maybe I'd better take it over to mineralogy. We might even discover gold. Oh, I don't <laughs> doubt it. Oh, Rob, if my community catch, kitchen would only catch on, if people only realized that vegetables and fruits and 
Good balanced diets would make them feel better. It's a beautiful dream, Ellen. If the regents would let me start a woman's laboratory here, other women could be trained in this work. Well, maybe they will. What's the matter, dear? Oh, I'm so sorry I get so involved in this thing. I, I guess I'm pretty selfish. You had something to tell me. I have something to show you, Ellen, and I wish I didn't. What is it? Something in that newspaper? Yes, it's in the letters to the editor. It's that awful Mr. Herbert. Oh, you read it, Rob. All right. So-called New England kitchen is a pipe dream. Are you going to eat what some flighty female chemist tells you is good for you, or are you going to eat what you like? The word like is in capital letters. Oh. If you begin by regulating your meals by a chart, you will end by living from, yes, even dying by a oh. chart. Oh, sometimes I wish a lady were allowed to swear. Go ahead, my darling. Fire away. I... I... I can't think of any suitable words. What good is Don or, or oh, fudge? And fudge isn't on your diet chart, huh? <laughs> can't they understand? Food that's good for you can taste good, too. Apparently nothing's good enough for our Mr. Herbert. And he's very influential, Rob. He could close the kitchen down. Oh, let him. <laughs> if I know you, Ellen, darling, you'll start another one first thing next morning. <laughs> How's the table look, Rob? Oh, magnificent. I'll bet old Andrew's eyes will pop out when he sees that centerpiece. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day he'd come to dinner here. <laughs> or the day we'd invite him. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm getting mellower or something. I realize now the poor thing's been led around by his stomach all his life. Well, I guess everything's ready. Oh? Will you ask Mamie to announce dinner? Oh, well, well, dear me. Oh, oh. A perfect dinner, Mrs. Richards. Absolutely perfect. Thank you, Dr. Uncle. You're delightful. Centerpiece, delightful. Uh, did you arrange it yourself? With Mamie's help. She's very artistic. Mm. Dr. Uncle, mm. wouldn't you say this is the time for your important announcement? Announcement? Oh, yes, yes. I feel that there could be no more propitious moment to inform our ch charming colleague that we have, after long consideration... An earnest discussion decided to... Is there a, what in thunder is that? Sounds like a parade. Oh, yes. Look, come over here to the window. All right. yeah. It's a parade, all right. An army of silly females making a hullabaloo about women's rights, getting the franchise. Preposterous nonsense. I remember. This is the night they set for their demonstration. Well, I say it's an outrage. And I suppose next thing we know, you'll be out there marching with him, Mrs. Richards, wearing bloomers, carrying placards. <laughs> I don't think so, Dr. Andrews. Why not? Aren't you always talking about women's rights, poppycock like that? No, it seems to me that the best way for a woman to find her place in the world is not to march for it, but to work for Thank it. Thank you, dear lady, for giving me such a fine opportunity for completing my announcement. Oh, yes. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to inform you that MIT has decided to inaugurate a laboratory for the express purpose of educating young women in the field of science. Ah. And you, Mrs. Richards, are to be its first instructor. <laughs> Congratulations, um, Ellen. I... I... I can't say anything except that it's... Oh, it's, it's simply splendiferous. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Richards. Yes, Dr. Andrews. I uh, would like to ask you something. Of course. What is it? Well, I was just wondering, even with your new duties and all, if uh, perhaps you couldn't uh, find time uh, to teach my cook to cook. beg your pardon. Yes? Is there something I can do for you? Well, I was looking for the chemistry laboratory. I, I want to enroll in the course. That's why I came to MIT. Come in, my dear. You're in the right place. I'm Mrs. Richards. Now, take off your bonnet. I'll give you an apron and a table of your own to work on, and we'll get started right away. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, aren't there any other students? Not yet. You're my very first. But don't you worry. 
women are going to be recognized someday as scientists, both in the laboratory and in the home. And pretty soon, there'll be so many students here, we won't know where to put them. And now, young lady, let's get to work. Geraldine Fitzgerald will return in a few moments. But first, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Whenever you hear the word nylon, you no doubt think of nylon stockings or perhaps the nylon bristles of your toothbrush. It's hard to realize, hearing it practically every day, that a little more than 10 years ago, the word nylon didn't even exist. In just the last decade, this product of DuPont Chemical Research... This remarkable development, which has brought more beauty, strength, and longer life to so many fabrics and materials, has helped bring about better living for all of us. Tonight, I'd like to tell you about another form of nylon, DuPont nylon plastic. DuPont produces this extremely versatile and sturdy plastic in the form of molding powder. This is sold to manufacturers who use it to make new and improved articles for home and industry. Among the things you can buy for yourself, your family, and your home, now made of the exciting new DuPont nylon plastic, are bathroom tumblers, light in weight and virtually unbreakable, funnels for filling baby bottles that can be safely sterilized in boiling water, slide fasteners that remain sturdy and give service with a minimum of care, and combs that are tough and can be sterilized. DuPont nylon plastic also serves you in many unseen ways. For example, as small functional parts in motors and instruments, such as gears, bearings, and coil forms. Nylon's toughness has wanted a place as a protective covering for electrical wiring, and its use in long-wearing, self-locking nuts has made an important contribution to safety. In these industrial applications, just as in products you buy for your home, the possibilities for this amazing nylon plastic are many. Like the nylon in stockings, DuPont nylon plastic has the virtue of being strong, yet light in weight. Its many advantages will undoubtedly bring nylon into a large number of new products, as well as improve many old products. Yes, you'll be hearing and using this name more and more. DuPont nylon plastic, one of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> Now, here's Geraldine Fitzgerald. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to talk to you from the heart, about the heart. One out of every three deaths in this country is caused by disease of the heart. Your help is needed to combat the nation's number one killer. So please, get in touch with the American Heart Association in New York City or communicate with your local heart association to find out how you can join the cardiac crusade and fight heart disease. Thank you. Next week's Cavalcade will present two celebrated stars, Basil Rathbun and Thomas Mitchell. Our play is a little-known and unusual story of George Washington during the first months of his administration as president. Be sure to listen to Cavalcade next week at the same time when our stars will be Basil Rathbun and Thomas Mitchell. Tonight's original DuPont cavalcade, Paging Miss Ellen, was written by Virginia Radcliffe. Now, featured in tonight's play with Geraldine Fitzgerald was Clayton Collier as Professor Richards. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. And this is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to The President and the Doctor, starring Basil Rathbun and Thomas Mitchell. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York, and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.